by the river You know the river The river runs with the blues I said the river The river runs with the blues Oh yeah It runs with the blues, oh yeah And just like a river, I gotta keep on running too I'll tell you why Cause the blues is like a river, you know you can't stop it Even with stones in its pathway Cause it's gonna work its way around Even if it takes both night and day Because the blues is like a river It's always on the move You gotta tack your way through it But always staying in the groove Because the river The river runs with the blues Because every time you step into a river You're stepping into something brand new And every time you truly hear the blues song being sung It's always a different blues I'll play it Step into a river You're stepping into something that's brand new Every time you hear a blues song being sung It's always a different blues Because the blues It can be your enemy or your very best friend Either way it's gonna stick with you Both thick and thin So whether you think of yourself as a Delta Queen Or hug thin on a raft The blues can break your heart Or make you burst into a laugh Because the river The river I said the river Oh yeah You know it runs It runs with the blues I said it runs With the blues It's gonna run With the With the blues Thank you. And welcome to Roundabout Blues Time. Uh, you're probably waiting to understand why I'm sitting in this chair and he's sitting over there and why I I'm here I was wondering the same thing. What I know. the hell is going on here? I thought <laughs> this was my show. We, we decided to play the flip-flop today. My, right. my son used to, when he was growing up, he used to say that today was backwards day. The so we're doing upside so down. We're doing so back, what, never knew yeah. what backwards day meant. We didn't know it until the day went along. But today is backwards day. I'm Bill Humphreys, and I'm sitting in the chair for TJ, who is our guest. So we got a guest as a host, and the host as a guest. Mm -hmm. That was terrific. That's, Thank you. That's, that's an amazing piece of music. That's uh, one I wrote a couple of years back. You wrote that? Yeah. I thought, that was gonna, I thought you were going to say that, that was written by a somebody. It was by a somebody, <laughs> yeah. Or oh, oh, nobody, it depending was. on the way you look at it. It was by a TJ Wheeler. It was by a TJ Wheeler. That's great. It's just cool. reflecting on, uh, on on the blues and the blues history, you know, you can trace the uh, the blues really just by tracing the, the geography of uh, the rivers of this country to such a large degree. And of course, uh, Langston Hughes had a, a poem about the rivers, you know, and it's a it's it's a theme that you hear about, and it's a philosophical metaphor too. So. 
seemed like the, the, you know, the river runs with the blues. Has the blues changed a lot over the years? I mean, yeah, it's changed a lot, but at, this, at the same core, it's still the, the same uh, catalyst that, uh, that forms the blues, you know, that is the impetus for the blues, you know. Uh, good, you know, one of the sayings is uh, the blues ain't nothing but a, a good man done wrong or a good woman done wrong. And there's, there's, uh, there's always current injustices that are, are done to, to the human species and, and individual as well as a collective basis. I always, always think of that uh, as, as more on the collective basis when I'm thinking about the origins of the blues. Instead of a, the blues ain't nothing but a good man done wrong. To me, since it's really an African-American uh, music originally, I think of it as, a, as losing nothing but a good people that were done wrong. Is there a, a time when the blues started? Can you, can you put something on a timeline and say the blues happened? Well, uh, yeah, uh, in a way I can. I can speculate at least, you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, uh, educators and uh, musicologists, uh, uh, you know, to make sweeping generalizations, uh, just along with uh, the racist nature of uh, our country uh, back then, uh, a lot of uh, uh, importance wasn't placed on black history, whether it was musical history or uh, the, the amazing list of uh, scientists and uh, um, war heroes, you know, to inventors, on and on and on. Uh, so uh, a lot of it is a uh, even by the best of academics, I think a, a lot of it is still to a de degree uh, speculative. But I, I uh, kind, of, uh, kind of think of it as really coming at, at the end of, uh, of uh, Reconstruction, you know? And if I really uh, I wanted to put a, 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 a concrete date on it, I would say uh, when the Supreme Court uh, made the decision with a Plessy uh, versus uh, Ferguson, which uh, legalized, basically legalized the separate but equal, mm -hmm. which was the foundation of the, all the Jim Crow laws. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you know, you imagine uh, the Civil War being fought where more people were lost, more Americans were lost in that war, even to this day, than all the wars before and after combined. And uh, so much of it uh, because of the, of the stopping of Reconstruction, uh, where uh, blacks had made such progress during, say, the 10, 15 years of Reconstruction. And, uh, and when Rutherford uh, B. Hayes uh, uh, did away with Reconstruction, that uh, really, uh, that was the, the start of the dismantling of, uh, of, you know, when he pulled the troops out of the, the South that were protecting uh, African Americans to a degree. They weren't protecting them very much, not nearly as much as they should, but they were doing uh, uh, enough to uh, at least keep the progress going. And more, more blacks were uh, uh, elected to Congress and, and the Senate then than there would be for at least another hundred years once Jim Crow started. And there was even blacks, uh, will, uh, you know, opposed to the, the recent movie 42, there was actually uh, blacks uh, integrated into National League Baseball back then, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, too, which yeah. is, goes totally unnoticed. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, the progress was just uh, incredible. And so uh, when, uh, uh, when that was uh, taken back and uh, uh, Plessy Ferguson, versus Ferguson, the separate but uh, equal, uh, so-called equal laws were, were put in. That's uh, almost at the exact same time that I've noticed that most blues academics uh, have said was when, when people started calling the music the blues. This is when the blues and, But started. it's funny because in researching that, I never like turned to a popular blues magazine or even a blues author and found that correlation I didn't find that correlation until I had read that that's when several times in the uh, mid-1890s uh, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. mid to, to the late 1890s that that term started being used. Um. Before W.E.B. Du Bois, for instance, remind, uh, rem, uh, remembers uh, his parents uh, calling it sorrow songs. 
Oh, really? Four row songs, yeah. Okay. And uh, Mississippi Fred McDowell, one of the outstanding uh, Delta bluesmen, uh, he, uh, on his album, uh, I Do Not Play No Rock and Roll, uh, he recalls his grandfather calling it the reels. The reels. And so the ethnomusicologist that was making the liner notes for that album, he put in the liner notes that the blues came out of the reels. R-E-E-L-S. And that's something right. As much as I like those kinds of reels, that just didn't sit right with me. Yeah, but I just, well, yeah. you know, what do I know? These are, these, are the, these are the shirts with the degrees, you know? Yeah, so right. they, they must know what's happening. So the blues yeah. came out of the reels. Not till long after that, when I started hearing it being, you know, people uh, recollecting that, uh, older uh, African Americans, uh, oh yeah, it was called the reels. Yeah. It was called the reels, meaning R E A L S. Yeah, so, yeah I uh, can see that. Yeah, but, uh, uh, yeah. And, not, and then I didn't make that correlation between Plessy versus Ferguson and Rutherford B. Hayes uh, and the end of Reconstruction. Uh, till I started reading books on black history, mm -hmm. the chronological mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm -hmm. leaps and bounds, as well as the, uh, the things that set time back and set the changes back and progress mm -hmm. yeah. back. And that was a, that was a, a big change. And, and coincidentally, that's when they started, at the same time, they started calling it the blues. Wow. So. Can you, can you give us a little bit of an example of, of the difference between where the blues has traveled from that particular point in time to this particular point in time to today to what we would refer to maybe as the current blues? Sure. Just like to hear, I'm, I'm right. sure that there must be some kind of an audible difference yeah. between the two. Well, you know, in, in, in different parts of the country and, and, and whatnot, there was a lot of different styles of blues, mm -hmm. you know, as the the more the, the radio and, and jukeboxes and stuff like that started happening. Jukeboxes, by the way, were the, the word juke is an old African term as well as an African-American term for dancing. So, the, so, so that's the it, juke the, joint? Yeah, the juke joint and then consequently the, the jukeboxes. And so but when those jukeboxes uh, started happening and those different and, and more radio stations too, and, and, uh -huh. and with uh, uh, cheaper radios and people being able to uh, pick up what was happening in a, in a, a st stayed over. But also, people had a chance to listen. Mm -hmm. You know, Robert Johnson could listen to Lonnie Johnson mm -hmm. playing in New Orleans with Duke Ellington. You mm -hmm. know, or uh, or Louis Armstrong. So then, the, the, you know, the, the, there was more a crossover and styles, but originally, uh, supposedly, there was more uh, selective uh, uh, geographical styles and stuff mm. like that, you know. So uh, those styles change, and, uh, but uh, if we really want to go down early, we might as well head down to the Diddley Bow country. Diddley Bow. Diddley Bow is a one-string instrument that most folks these days uh, consider the, uh, the origins of at least the, the blues guitar. Of course, there was guitars and there was even uh, other slide instruments in, uh, in different cultures around the world. But uh, this instrument, people started making it and even when uh, I started first becoming aware of these uh, one-string guitars called the diddly bow, which was probably about 20 years ago, or a little after that, uh, uh, or before. Uh, most p people that I met that were uh, playing them, you, you know, thought, it seemed to think that uh, it, it was derived from uh, Mississippi. Mm. But it, it really, uh, I, I've seen these uh, in uh, South America. When oh, really? I was doing yeah, a yeah. Blues in the schools with an organization called Partners of, Am of the Americas. Uh -huh. Uh, along with our Blues Bank Collective, a nonprofit organization, they helped me uh, uh, go to Brazil and do uh, two weeks in, of blues wow. in the school education, which was really uh, my education. And yeah, I'm not yeah. sure about anybody else, but I sure learned a lot. And I, I saw the diddly bows down there too. They weren't called diddly bows, and they might look a little different, but uh, no two diddly bows really look quite alike, <laughs> anyhow. Uh, and then uh, also, uh, 
So if you found them, in other words, if, you, if, I, if I saw them in Bahia, which is uh, reputedly the most African uh, place you can find outside of the continent of Africa itself, uh, th that, they, this, that it's an African instrument. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then with a little bit of research and a trip to Africa, I found that, that, that diddly bows, yeah, they'll call it something else, the one string guitar, or any, even the shape of like cigar box guitars. I was going to say, like it's that. a precursor of a cigar box banjo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, pretty much simultaneously, yeah. 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 Uh, but uh, something about the, the one string, I'd been playing slide guitar for uh, decades on a six string guitar or whatever, but uh, when you, you play it on, uh, on the diddly bow, it doesn't have the other strings that will absorb some of the overtones and undertones and halfway tones and this and that. And when you just got that one string hanging out there by itself, when you use the slide, of course, you use the slide on the diddly bow because uh, the, the strings would be uh, too high up to use your fingers anyhow. Mm -hmm. But when you get, if you listen carefully, when, I, when I'm going from a low string to a high string, <laughs> There's a, another sound going at the, the, the polar opposite. So as I'm going low to high, the, the octave, three or four octaves above that, is going from uh -huh. high to low. And if I go from low, uh, high to low, then it's going from low to high. So without a, without a stack of Marshall amplifiers and, 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 and this whole area, uh, consumed by uh, foot pedals and things like that, you can get all kinds of special effects. Just one person, a slide, and the diddly bow, and one string, and one string. Wow. Yeah. So let me uh, let me do something on that. Now this song is credited. Later on in the blues, to the great Shakespeare, the blues, and that, of course, is uh, Willie Dixon talking about the facts of life, the blues of the facts of life. But earlier versions of this song, or this theme about the spoonful, have been done by several people. Could be a spoonful of sugar. Be a spoonful of tea, just a spoon of your love. That's enough to satisfy me, don't you know? Some cry about the spoon, some lie about the spoon, some cry about the spoon. Everybody's talking about spoonful, spoon that, spoon that. That, that spoon, that spoon, that spoon. Everybody's fired about spoonful. Could be a spoonful of diamonds. Could be a spoonful of gold. Just a spoon of your love. It's enough to satisfy my soul. Don't you know? Some cry. About the spoon, some lie. About the spoon, some even die. About the spoon, but everybody's fighting by the spoonful of that. That spoon, that spoon, that. That spoon, that spoon, that. Everybody's fighting by the spoonful. Give me some spoonful.
That spoon, that spoon, that That spoon, that spoon, that That spoon, that spoon, that Where well, everybody's fighting by spoonful There you go. That's amazing, one string. That is, is, this would be a, a, a precursor, or did this come along the same time as the wash tub bass, where it's still one string, but... Once again, you can find uh, various uh, one string instruments that go, go back to Africa. Yeah. And, and one must remember that a, a lot of these uh, jug band instruments, like the, the wash tub bass, mm -hmm. Uh, to quote the uh, late uh, Malcolm X, people were just using what they had by any means necessary. You know, they didn't have the money to uh, just head down to the local music store like my parents did mm -hmm. and buy their son mm -hmm. a new guitar or a second-hand guitar or even. Yeah. Not yeah. for the most part, the people coming out of uh, uh, either slavery or, or still Jim Crow, yeah. the sharecropping uh, farms and things like that. So yeah, the, the homemade instruments. But quite often, to, to me, to my ears, these homemade instruments of the wash tub bass, the diddly bow cigar box guitars, wash boards too, were uh, a lot of times to me, they were replicating instruments that they weren't allowed to play. Like uh, during slavery, uh, the only place that allowed uh, African drumming was New Orleans. And that's really the, the, the French and the, and the, the Spanish influence uh, being that even after uh, 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 Jefferson uh, the, you know, enacted the Louisiana Purchase and, and Louisiana actually was a part of the United States, especially in New Orleans. New Orleans had been uh, traveling and I mean uh, uh, trading heavily with Cuba as it did for decades and decades and hundreds of years actually. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, as well as the other places in the Caribbean. So uh, uh, New Orleans is really more than the, part of the United States, is really the nor northern tip of the Caribbean. Oh. And, and because... Uh, cultural the, the, sense. Yes, yeah. and, be, and because the French or uh, Spanish, uh, though they definitely had slavery, you know, mm -hmm. not to mm -hmm. cut them any slack at all, but at least on Sundays, People were allowed to go to a place called Congo Square, which they, they attribute to being now uh, as a, 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 they, they say they think the origins of the Congo Square were a part of what is now uh, Louis Armstrong Park, uh, right oh, off, oh. Uh, off Rampart Street yeah, in, the, yeah. in the French Quarter in New Orleans. And on Sundays, people could not only drum and dance, but they could make crafts, uh, sell food. And so between that and, and, uh, and being able to uh, have a lot of uh, communication back and forth with Cuba, mm -hmm. uh, with uh, s people that were enslaved that were of African descent that, yeah. that w would come, you know, and, and a chance for communication. Uh, 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 New Orleans didn't lose that African connection. But for the, for, the, for, uh, for the better part of, of the country during slavery, uh, those same African drums, the djembe or talking drum, were out loud, out loud uh, as well as just any, anything else that was really African, a language, clothing, mm -hmm. names, religion. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, uh, in New Orleans, they allowed, they looked the other way. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, people were supposedly, uh, practicing Catholicism, mm -hmm. which they were, but at the same time they were uh, taking all those saints and they, they were attributing uh, the, uh, those saints to different deities that had, instead of one god, a lot to, like the Yoruba religion, would have several deities. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so the uh, Catholicism was perfect for that. So they did the same thing in Haiti too. And, and, and uh, throughout history, basically, the Catholic Church did look the other way and continue to look the, yeah. the other way. Yeah, yeah. interesting. You know? So, but in, in other places in the country that, that didn't allow that African drum, and of course, uh, there's two reasons they didn't allow the African drum. Number one, it could be used uh, for communication. Mm -hmm. and, and they say that uh, 
and in retrospect, looking at the communication that uh, people that could send in signals in the drums, opposed to a, being a primitive society and primitive culture, that those uh, drum uh, secret codes were far more sophisticated than Morse code and things like that, that wouldn't even be invented mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. And so they took the, uh, those drums away. But, they, but just as importantly, they wanted to take away the drums because it made them feel good about who they were, and even more so about where they came from. So uh, uh, manipulating, uh, it was part of the, the insidiousness of this peculiar institution uh, in, in America called slavery to, uh, to dehumanize uh, a person to make them accept the role that it's their lot in life. It's, it's what the Bible says, you know? It says Ham, yeah. right there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, Ham screwed up, man, so his son's the son that was black, so everybody's black, you know? Uh, so, anyhow, that's a little, just a little tidbit. This is just the icing. Uh, oh, I can imagine iceberg. the stories go much deeper. And, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. They, they go back. So, uh, people that weren't in New Orleans, uh, they had to, in order to maintain, maintain any kind of heritage, uh, they had to have their instruments and their culture go underground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, th there, there you got hoodoo, Mm -hmm, or voodoo, mm -hmm, as mm -hmm, it's called mm -hmm, in, in New Orleans, mm -hmm. and you and, and you also have uh, the creation of uh, the washboard instead of uh, 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 a guero or like a gourd with a bunch of ridges. Mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm, you know, yeah, yeah. and so and, and then the diddly bow and washed up bass and and kazoo. Distorted instruments, like uh, when Keith Richards uh, stomp, stomped on a foot pedal and they made a, a fuzz tone for, yeah. s for satisfaction, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, cats, uh, uh, guitar players like Hubie Summerlin and uh, Robert Lockwood Jr. and, other, and many, uh, many others uh, had been uh, taking their brand new uh, Gibson amplifier or Fender amplifier or whatever it was and, uh, and blowing people's minds by taking a knife and cutting the cone of the speaker a little bit to get a distorted, get a distorted sound. sound. And, and yeah. if you go, even if you look at gym bays, they, they have a pure sound, yeah. and then they have these, I call them elephant ears. They have these round silver things with yeah. little jingles yeah, on it, yeah. and they stick one on each end. And, uh, and the same thing with the kalimbas too. Some kalimbas have like a little uh, bottle caps with yeah, little yeah, uh, jingle yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. And so when you play it, it distorts. So the, this, the distortion sound was, uh, I, I've heard that it was a, as a way to do more spiritual music, to, uh, to uh, communicate with a, or celebrate at least the ancestors. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So jettison this forward a little yes. bit. Uh, okay. Uh, into to what would be now considered as uh, uh, modern or current or, or blues of today? Well, let's see. Very, very uh, seldom you, the, the average person, hears blues played on a nylon string guitar. Uh, if you look throughout recordings, I mean, there's, there's some cats like uh, Charlie Bird, great jazz guitarists. And of course, uh, as Brandy McGee said, in jazz, people use the form of the blues to improvise on. But in blues, you use the blues to tell the truth. <laughs> so Charlie Bird uh, improvised uh, a lot of wonderful uh, nylon string on, yeah. on all kinds of jazz songs, as well as blues. Uh, my friend over in, uh, in Europe named uh, Duck Baker plays a lot of nylon string guitar and always has. I've never known him to play anything else for that matter. But, uh, you know, but originally, uh, uh, if you go back to uh, Africa, a lot of the stringed instruments, most of the stringed instruments, not all of them, but a lot of them were, had gut strings, including uh, the, the original banjos yeah, yeah, yeah. with gut strings. Yeah. So I, I, think, uh, I think it sounds cool. Nice. <laughs> And this is called Sweet Blues.
sweet blues. There, there is there is no uh, <laughs> there is no question that what you what we're hearing is is uh, blues music. But I'm I'm hearing you know I, you you grow up in a certain period of time. Yes. And you get the impressions of the musical attitudes and, and mm. uh, respects of that particular era. And I'm hearing I'm hearing uh, riffs that sound like Sinatra. Ah. I'm hearing riffs that sound like Embryonic Journey from Jefferson Airplane. Okay. Yeah. I'm hearing Yoma. riffs that 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 uh, bring a lot of music forward. And I I don't know if, if it's just because I'm my my inexperience no, or my no. my disknowledge, if you'll have it, with the blues, but it. Can you associate with what I'm talking oh, about? Oh, I, I totally associate with it. I take that as a wonderful compliment. Oh, good. <laughs> I really do. I okay. really do. Uh, Duke Ellington's uh, favorite singer, uh, reputedly, was uh, Frank Sinatra. Oh, really? Yeah, I, that's, that's what yeah, I read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, him and uh, Tony Bennett, I think. You know? okay. uh, but uh, uh, it took me a while to wrap my head around Frank Sinatra, you know, yeah. or, or my mind, or my musical taste around him, you know. Uh, I, it didn't take long for me to uh, wrap it around an embryonic journey, though. You know, yeah. that was, yeah. that, you know yeah. that was my generation. You yeah. Know, yeah. Uh, Yorma, you know, um, yeah. wonderful uh, fingerstyle guitarist. But uh, uh, basically, it, it is a journey. Embryotic or not, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's a journey, yeah. and uh, and now nowadays, uh, you know, like when I'm, I'm trying to uh, point out to students, or as part of my blues in the school programs that I do all over the world, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I try to use this uh, valuable resource we have, the the internet, and I go, hey man, you know, we, you know, I'm glad you. Uh, hopefully, they enjoyed what I did, and hey, if you did, do yourself a favor. Get on YouTube and look up some of these artists that I've been talking yeah, yeah. about. Mississippi John Hurt, Charlie Patton, Robert Johnson, Son House, Bessie Smith, Memphis Minnie, Billy Holiday, Alani Johnson, you know, uh, on and on. Miles Davis, Louis Armstrong, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, King Oliver, Jelly Roll Morton. I'll give them all yeah, these names. Yeah. That if I'm working in a stage band, I'll go, okay, you play trombone, so man, you make sure you check out J.J. Johnson, Jack. Jack Teagard and you know yeah, uh, yeah. Kidori, all these different people, yeah. and uh, and some of them come back like really psyched, you know. Yeah. But uh, some of them go, well, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. You know, they're listening the, the, these uh, old grainy, watching these old yeah, YouTube's, right. you know, yeah. and. I'm going, really? That's all? <laughs> you know? Uh, but in, in my case, growing up, we didn't have that luxury of the, the internet. And a lot of times, I, I didn't even see images of these people that I loved so much outside of photographs. I didn't see images of them till I was like a, uh, touring in Europe, mm. where aficionados, before any aficionados that I knew, at least, in this country, they had uh, uh, somehow videos, uh, well, somehow it's be probably because uh, uh, like Willie Dixon, once again, uh, he uh, helped organize and do the booking for all these tours of uh, American blues artists that were going to Europe. And, they, and quite often uh, they documented the concerts mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that that footage was over there. And so for me, like the, the journey was like, uh, and I had a few other uh, zealot like uh, uh, musician friends like myself, and, and somebody would say like, oh wow, you dig Muddy Waters, then you would really like this guy, Sun House, you know, who? You know, and well, I don't have the record, but my friend has the record. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we'll have to catch a ferry boat to Seattle, and then we'll have to spend like <laughs> half a day on buses, you know, going yeah. up to Bothell, you yeah. know, or, or yeah. wherever. Yeah. But it would be like this journey, uh, whole, you know. That's great. Frodo in the ring, you know. <laughs> uh, and, and boy, by the time you got listening to that record, man, yeah. you would sit there and, and man, it was worth yeah. every yeah. Yeah. Uh, step of the way yeah. on the journey. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then when you were just like done with that, man. Yeah. And they go, oh, well, 
you'd like that man. You, yeah. You'd like this guy, Charlie Patton. What, you got one of his records? No, but I know somebody in Who Tacoma that, that's <laughs> got one of them, you know. So, you know, it was always yeah. like, you know, uh, researching and books yeah. and, and, and magazines, uh, uh, mostly within that so-called uh, yeah. blues bubble. Uh, of, uh, of academics, uh, you know, and, and bless their hearts, they, they made a, a vast contribution. But it wasn't until I uh, really was in Portsmouth, uh, I'd lived in, in uh, like Memphis and uh, deep in the, in the inner city uh, with uh, people like Booker White and mm -hmm. Furry Lewis and people like that, and, and was, you know, directly exposed to uh, seeing a lot of the injustices and, and, and the living conditions of, yeah. of what was going on. But as far as like really learning about black history, I, I had to give um, uh, credit to uh, uh, Valerie Cunningham, uh, mm -hmm. who a noted uh, African-American history scholar, especially of uh, uh, noted history in, in this area, area. And viewers see her every week because she's in the intro yeah, of, yeah. Our, of our program. And uh, so, uh, it, it, like I said, it wasn't until uh, she hit me to, uh, you know, read uh, uh, Lerone Bennett and other people like that, other historians, and, and starting. The, and then the more I read, all of a sudden I'd, I'd, I'd make connections with the, the, the history, the, the history of the, the music. But to me, it just it showed me that music can't be put in that kind of a bubble, a uh, microcosm, separated from uh, uh, the rest of, of, yeah. of culture without teaching what was happening in the history. Like, you know, sure. people say, oh yeah, well, so in, in the mid 1890s, they started calling it the blues. Yeah. That's all we know, don't ask, yeah. you know. Oh, uh, uh, but you know, I don't know, but well, like I said, that's my speculative uh, uh, assumptions. Yeah. Yeah. I wanna let you have an opportunity to, to take us uh, on more of a musical tour here. Okay. So, um, uh, just head on out and do what you think yeah. is right to, to uh, illustrate we'll the blues for us. Well, uh, uh, to me, uh, uh, blues is, a, is more of a feeling than a form, though the form is important too, but uh, uh, that, that feeling... Uh, uh, knows no, no barriers. So uh, when uh, the early uh, jazz musicians were in New Orleans playing, they thought of their music as blues, even though it wasn't necessarily a, a 12 bar, all of it. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and then as those mu musicians grew into different areas, like Kansas City, Count Basie, Jay McShann, all those musicians, the, the blues was such an important, integral foundation, ingredient. So uh, uh, I, I like doing a lot of uh, uh, bluesy jazz songs. So uh, here's one from uh, Billie Holiday called Ooh, 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 What a Little Moonlight Can Do. <laughs> What a little moonlight can do ooh, 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 ooh. What a little moonlight can do for you You're in love Your heart's a flutter All week long You only stutter Because you're poor heart it will not utter the words I love you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What a little moonlight can do. Wait a while till little moon becomes peeping through. You're a gecko. You can't resist her. All you say is when you've kissed her that ooh ooh ooh. What a 
little moonlight can do Up there You got two instruments here that you haven't played yet. I want, okay. I'd like to hear them. Yes. Well, this is the. I, I started off with a seven-string guitar, a steel-string archtop from the Eastman Company that gave me were generous enough to give me an, an endorsement arrangement, and then with the Janini, we of course we did a diddly bow, and I got an endorsement on my diddly bow too from did you? Mark Dow who has a diddly bow cigar box uh, uh, store up in Hill, New Hampshire. Uh, he was uh, uh, recently on a, a Chronicle show that he featured a lot of this stuff. And, uh, and then the uh, Janini Company in Brazil uh, were nice enough to uh, give me an endorsement deal as well. So I wouldn't be able to get any of these inst instruments you, without the help of people <laughs> you like that. Won, you won that big time, didn't you? Oh, That's yeah, great. I did. And uh, also, speaking of... Uh, of not, not being able to do what I do outside of a wonderful family, you know, my mom and dad are no longer with me uh, physically, but uh, and, and wonderful wife and family, Nadine Perry and her extended family. Uh, I, I, my family of friends in, here in uh, New Hampshire have definitely uh, helped me mm -hmm. a lot. Of, Having all it took f uh, to do this, create this uh, show, Roundabout Blues Time, was one phone call to you, <laughs> and, and you and you signed me up right there. You know, we hadn't even spoken for years, so uh, and also I really had to uh, pay my props to the New Hampshire State Council on the Arts, absolutely, and uh, in collaboration with the National Endowment of the Arts, organizations like Partners of America, VSA, et cetera, et cetera, have helped me throughout my uh, career and continue to help me. Uh, they recently, the New Hampshire State uh, 
uh, Council on Arts recently awarded me the 2013 uh, Individual uh, Artist Fellowship Award, which uh, helped, has helped me uh, so great. much. It was the second time they gave me that award in, uh, in about 20 years. So wow. uh, that really means a lot to me. And their overall support with uh, Blues uh, in Education programs yes. Yes. and so many other things, that tr the traditional arts program. I'm involved in that a lot. Okay, now we're going over to, a, 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 once again, I talked about New Orleans, and, uh, and there's their kind of blues, all right? So we'll do a, a, little, a little something with the New Orleans-style blues. <laughs> Tune of the banjo would never get this thing wrapped up, so. Talk about going old school. One of the oldest, oldest jazz or blues tunes. Written by no other. Buddy Bolden and Mr. Jelly Roll Martin. Them away. Give them a broom to sweep. Take them away. I thought I heard Judge Fogarty say. I thought I heard Mr. Frankie do some shot. Now, won't give me back my money? Mm, no, I'll beat it out. Mm, give me your money. I'll beat it out. I thought I heard. Shout out. Oh yeah. Take it away, and I thought I 
everybody got a kazoo stuck somewhere in their pocket. No, I hope so. <laughs> Never we, go anywhere without it. We've only got a couple of minutes left here. Just enough time to hear you play us out on the ukulele. All right, let's do that. It, it's um, it's something else, you know. When you you know a you know a person and you know of a person, and. Um, TJ and I have known each other for quite some time, but I've never had a chance. I've always known of him and not known him, and it's so great to have an opportunity to talk with you and, and get to know you as opposed to know of you. Well, uh, thank you, and, and the, right back at you. And th this program, uh, one of the greatest things about this program is that it, it gets to uh, take away the leaves of the artichoke of the music that I love, and each program has two or three leaves, you know, and keeps getting to closer to the heart of what this music to me is about and all my friends that I'm able to uh, have featured on this show. This is, this is, this could, this conversation could go on and on and on. Oh and on. yeah. Let's hear, uh, let's hear the you can, uh, thank you for joining us on Roundabout Blues Time. We'll see you next time. Yeah. Time it rains, it rains, paid it's from heaven. Don't you know, don't you know, don't you know that every drop contains paid it's from heaven. You're gonna seek your fortune, mama, all over town. Just remember your umbrella's gotta be upside down. Trade them for a pocket full of sunshine and flowers. But remember, if you want the things you love, you must have showers. When you hear that thunder, don't hide under the tree. The bee panics from heaven for you and me.